question. The first question is from Danielle. I keep people here. I keep hearing people saying to niche down and it stresses me out. Do I want a super specific niche or do I want to just write about whatever I want to write about? So when we're talking about really quick, like backing, we got to back up here to talk about this way back when blogs really kind of just used to be write whatever you want to. And the traffic came, it was really easy to do that. People had large followings on these blogs that were really pure lifestyle blogs. It wasn't like they were giving out necessarily like advice. It was more of kind of like a diary of their day to day life. Um, And people really bought into that. It's kind of like the precursor to vlogs where they are like video blogs. Those those typically like right now, especially you're not seeing a lot of them making the money that people want to see from their blog and from their business. As far as like niching down, I do recommend having a niche and not just like talking about whatever it is that you want. But I'm also not a fan of going so niched that your audience is like five people. So here's what I mean um, as far as two things that you can be careful of when you're picking the niche for your blog. You don't want to be too specific. You want to be specific about the content that you want to write about, but not so specific, again, that there's only three people. Here's a bad example of like too specific or what I kind of would call too specific. Um, If your blog is about dog tutus for single dads whose children have gone to college in Topeka, Kansas only. What? That blog only applies to da- dog dads from Topeka, Kansas, whose children are in school who want to put tutus on their dog. That is way too specific. Now, can you have that and be successful? I guess you can. I'm sure that there's somebody out there who does have a dog tutu blog in Topeka, Kansas. Can you broaden that a little bit? Do you want to talk to single dads who love to dress up their dogs? You can. Absolutely. That's a very good niche because it's kind of a nice broad ish niche. It's still specific, but you're not only going to be talking about specifically dog tutus for dads whose children have graduated college in Topeka, Kansas. You're talking about what kinds of things you can use to dress up your dog. You're talking about the supplies that you need. What is um, a good thing for um, like, where do you source your tutus? Where do you get your dog clothes? How do you stay um, connected with other people? How do you find other people in your space to be friends with? Um, How do you explain what you do when you're sewing your dog tutus? Like whatever it is, there's more that you can add under that umbrella. I do kind of recommend going broader than this example, but not by a whole mess. We don't want to go so broad that this is the niche that we're talking about. This is the one that I see It's got to be every week I get an email from somebody who's like, I need help with my blog. Nobody's seeing my content. Okay, well, who do you talk to? Moms. Leave the mothers out of this, all right? So what kind of moms? Moms with older children, moms with younger children, moms with a lot of children, moms with one child, Um, crunchy moms, not crunchy moms, what is it called? Unschooling moms, homeschooling moms, private schooling moms, public schooling moms, moms who are soccer moms, moms whose kids play the piano. There's so much. And that's not even getting into like the nitty gritty of those different niches. But when we talk about like a niche that is too broad, moms. So when you are coming up with the niche for your site, you want to narrow it down. My favorite way to narrow things down is to ask kind of like a, uh, it's a question that I think of like it's as trying to figure out who it is that you're talking to. I help blank who want to blank who struggle with blank. Those are kind, that's kind of my, my outline for figuring out like a good niche. I help busy moms of four children who struggle with or who want to get out of debt and live a happy life on the income that they have, but who struggle with not making enough money. That's who I help with my blog. It's very specific, but it's not so specific that it's geographically isolating half of more than half of the population. It's not so specific that there's only possibly three readers for it. But it's not so broad 
that it's not helping anybody. Because the problem is when you go too broad with your topic, it's really difficult to be known for anything. It's really difficult at that point to say like, I want to, in this one blog post, I'm going to talk about helping moms who are struggling with um, getting dinner on the table at the end of the day, who are struggling with maybe uh, uh, what after school sports to put their kids in. Like those are pretty broad topics. And if you're just talking to moms, of course you can write those kinds of posts, but it's going to be harder for Google to understand what your blog is about. It's going to be harder for YouTube, um, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, for everything, for them to know what your site is about. So if you're so broad that you're trying to appease everybody, the problem is you're not going to bring in anybody. Not that your content isn't good, not that your writing isn't great, not that your blog post wouldn't even be helpful. I'm sure that they would be. But the issue is that if people don't know who it is that you're talking to, it's going to be a problem. So when you're figuring out who you are writing to, what you should be blogging about, and fill in the blanks to this. I help blank. What kind of people? Who want to blank? What kind of life do they want? What kind of outcome are they hoping for by reading your blog post? Who struggle with blank? What are they struggling with? And don't just say overwhelm. And we can talk about that in another video. Don't just say overwhelm. They're overwhelmed. What does that look like? What does that feel like? They're stressed out. What does that look like? What does that feel like? Does it feel like being afraid to open the mail because they're afraid to get a collections notice in the mail? Are they worried about being able to put the food on the table at the end of the day? And these are all for my niche because I talk about finances. Are they worried about how they're going to put food on the table? Are they worried about being able to afford the extracurricular activities that their kids want to go into? Like all of those different kinds of things could be things that show up as stress and overwhelm in our people's lives. And the more specific that we know what it is that our people are struggling with, the more that we can help them in our content. This is not something before we even go any further, finding out the niche for your blog is not something that I necessarily think like you need to have set in stone forever the second that you hit publish on your first blog post. I'm not a big fan of like, you don't have to figure this all out. A lot of this stuff, you come up with a general idea and it becomes clearer as you keep writing, as you keep creating your content. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I think that that's better because you're still taking steps to learn this process, to learn about writing, to learn about yourself and how you feel inside of your blog post and what you naturally want to talk about. Sometimes it does take time. And the only way to kind of figure that one out is to do it. You can always change it. You can always change what it is that you talk about as you go along with your blog. There's nothing wrong with that. Like you're not just only going to be able to talk about what it is that one time that you were like, I'm going to talk to moms. You can change your niche. You can change your topics. There's nothing wrong with that as you go. Mm -hmm.